The Upright Revolution, or Why Humans Walk Upright, by Nguji Wathyongo. A long time ago, humans used to walk on legs and arms, just like all the other four-limbed creatures. Humans were faster than hares, leopards, or rhinos. Legs and arms were closer than any other organs. They had similar corresponding joints, shoulders and hips, elbows and knees, ankles and wrists, feet and hands, each ending with five toes and fingers, with nails on each toe and finger. Hands and feet had similar arrangements of their five toes and fingers from the big toe and thumb to the smallest toes and pinkies. In those days, the thumb was close to the other fingers, the same as the big toe. Legs and arms called each other first cousins. They helped each other carry the body wherever it wanted to go, the market, the shops, up and down trees and mountains, anywhere that called for movement. Even in the water, they worked well together to help the body float, swim, or dive. They were democratic and egalitarian in their relationship. They could also borrow the uses of the product of other organs, say, sound from the mouth, hearing from the ears, smell from the nose, and even sight from the eyes. Their rhythm and seamless coordination made the other parts green with envy. They resented having to lend their special genius to the cousins. Jealousy blinded them from the fact that legs and hands took them places. They started plotting against the two pairs. Tongue borrowed a plan from brain and put it into action immediately. It began to wonder loudly about the relative powers of arms and legs. Who was stronger, it wondered. The two cousin limbs, who had never been bothered by what the other had, said, had and could do, now borrowed sound from mouth and began to claim they were more important to the body than the other. This quickly changed into who was more elegant. Arms bragged about the long, slim fingers of its hands, at the same time making derisive comments about the toes being short and thick, not to be outdone. Toes countered and talked derisively about thin fingers, starving cousins. This went on for days, at times affecting their ability to work together effectively. It finally boiled down to the question of power. They turned to the other organs for arbitration. It was Tongue who suggested a contest. A brilliant idea, all agreed. But what? Some suggested a wrestling match, leg and arm wrestling. Others came up with sword play, juggling, racing, or playing a game like chess or checkers, but each was ruled out as hard to bring about or unfair to one or the other limb. It was Tongue once again, after borrowing thought from brain, who came up with a simple solution. Each set of organs would come up with a challenge in turns. Arms and legs agreed. The contest took place in a clearing in the forest near a river. All organs were on maximum alert for danger or anything that might catch the body by surprise. Now that all its organs were, gain, were engaged in internal struggle, eyes scanned far and wide for the tiniest of dangers from whatever distance. Ears primed themselves to hear the slightest sound from whatever distance. Nose cleared its nostrils the better to detect the scent of any danger that escaped the watchful eyes and listening ears, and tongue was ready to shout and scream, Danger! Wind spread news of the contest to the four corners of the forest, the water and the air. Four-legged animals were among the first to gather, many of the big ones holding green branches to show they came in peace. It was a wonderful crowd colorful crowd of leopard, cheetah, rhino, lion, hyena, elephant, giraffe, camel, longhorned cow, and shorthorned buffalo, antelope, gazelle, hare, mole, and rat. Water dwellers, hippo, fish, and crocodiles spread their upper parts on the banks, leaving the rest in the water. 
The two-legged, ostrich, guinea fowl, and peacock flapped their wings in excitement. Birds chirped from the trees. Cricket sang all the time. Spider, worm, centipede, and millipede crawled on the ground or trees. Chameleon sang all the time. Spider, worm, centipede, and millipede. Chameleon walked stealthily, carefully taking its time, while lizard ran about, never settling down on one spot. Monkey, chimpanzee, and gorilla jumped from branch to branch. Even the trees and the bush swayed gently from side to side, bowed, and then stood still in turns. Mouth opened the contest with a song. We do this to be happy, we do this to be happy, we do this to be happy, because we all come from one nature. Arms and legs swore to accept the outcome gracefully, no tantrums, threats of boycott, strikes, or go slow. Arms issued the first challenge. They threw a piece of wood on the ground. The leg, left or right or in combination, was to pick up the piece of wood from the ground and throw it. The two legs could consult each other at any time in the contest and deploy their toes, individually or collectively, in any order to affect their mission. They tried to turn it over, push it. They tried all sorts of combinations, but they could not pick it up properly. And as for moving it, the best they could do was kick it a few inches away. Seeing this, fingers borrowed sound from mouth and laughed and laughed. Arms, the challenger, paraded themselves as in a beauty contest, showing off their slim looks, and then, in different combinations, picked up the piece of wood. They threw it far into the forest, eliciting a collective sigh of admiration from the contestants and the spectators. They displayed other skills. They picked tiny pieces of sand from a bowl of rice. They threaded needles. They made little small pulleys for moving heavier wood, made some spears, and threw them quite far. Moves and acts that the toes could only dream about. Legs could only sit there and marvel at the display of dexterity and flexibility of their slim cousins. The arms of the spectators clapped thunder in admiration and solitarity with fellow arms, which upset the legs a great deal, but they were not about to concede. Even as they sat there looking a little bit glum, their big toes drooling little circles in the sand, they were trying to figure out a winning challenge.